People want the happy fairy tale ending for me. So do I. But for now, it keeps eluding me. I was abducted outside my house at knife point, taken to the bushes on the outskirts of the city. They both raped me. They stabbed me in the stomach afterwards in excess of 35, 36 times the doctors couldn't tell, and then cut my throat 16 times. I remember I was very, very scared. I was obviously fearful, but I was also trying desperately to stay calm. I was watching them for ways that I could have identified them later. I remember doing that. Um, but obviously, when, once I started my fight to actually survive, once I, once I started crawling and trying to get out, most of me knew I wasn't going to make it, but I wanted to. It's something that you never get over. You know, even now, I don't think I'm over it, but I think that talking had, has helped me. It was about a year later that I felt psychologically that maybe there would be a life after this. With a story like Alison, who, which is so extreme, what she went through is so extreme, there's so much to be found in there. There's so much healing or, or just, just a, a, leaning, a shoulder to lean on for victims of rape and abuse. And I mean, things have not gotten better for women in South Africa, they've gotten worse. Violence, violence against women and children is peaking worldwide. Um, so, so there is a lot, a lot, a lot to be gained from this story. But ultimately for me, the message is a bigger one than just I'm a rape survivor and, and all of that. It is the fact that the true hero lies within. I've had to look at that night and really look at why, why was it, because people are amazed, you know, people have said to me, oh, I just would have given up and died. And I have to attribute my mother, actually, because I, I think she, from a young age, taught me that I was valuable, that I was special. She would tell me, Alison, you're special. And when I think of that night now, I think, amongst all the other things, just wanting to live and whatever, I think I, I, I fought because I knew I was worth fighting for. And initially it was impactful because it was the trial and getting them to jail and being scared and is it, you know, have they got friends that they're going to come after me and all of that kind of thing. There was that initially. I was also very angry. Um, I hated them for what they'd done and I think that burdened on me rather than on them. I was feeling it in my... And it was only really when I decided that if I fought so hard to live, I, I might as well live a life that's worthy of having saved, if you know what I mean. So then, that's when I started realizing that the choice was mine, that um, if I was going to live a life that was happy, then I had to choose to be. So it was around about then that I started being asked to do talks about what had happened. People asked me to share about it, and that really, I think, has been my, my biggest healing. The night I went to listen to her talk for the first time and I walked away a better person and very inspired and, and I promised myself I want to be the one to tell this story as a filmmaker. I mean there were monsters and there was the bad but that, that's not the only thing. There were also miracles. I like to remind people of that. I think people sometimes, you know, we feel oh bad things have happened to us, poor me and I, it's hopeless and I think to remind them also that there is hope that there's hope that miracles will come and there's hope that if we choose to look at the stuff that's happened to us in a way that what, what can I find in here that's good, we will find it.